Stop there. That, how does that sound? There we go. Do there you like that? Is. I like that vibe. Yeah. Now, do you like, would you rather keep these on? Because we totally can. Is it? Do you like the, like being able I to think hear? It, you, it feels it, fun. It's giving you the, it's giving you the podcast vibes for social media. I'm so used to like wearing wigs. This is kind of like, it's comforting to having something up there. I cannot wait to get into all this. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Carrie Croft Show. How are you? I am doing wonderfully. So we just met. Yes. Like two little butterflies uh, at Pride. And I feel as though I saw you from afar and you were dressed in drag. And just, I mean, the joy and the beauty. I was like, I must know this person. <laughs> Who is this person? And then here we are. Here we are. I, I, I lassoed you in. I, I love that. I'm glad that whatever I was putting out there attracted yeah. you to come over Good. and say hello Good. and look at us now. Yes. Besties. Yes. Okay. So you're 32. You're from Canton, Ohio. You have a cookie company called Plenty O Cookies. When you get into your drag, you're just he, him dressed as a as she. So when, when I'm out of drag as Alex, it's he, him. When I'm in drag, I go by she, her, and it's plenty of smiles. Okay. But honestly, for for me, pronouns don't mean very much. So if you called me he when, like while I'm in drag, it wouldn't bother me. If you okay. call me she while I'm not in drag, it doesn't bother me. Um, but that's the way I kind of tell people because I feel like in general, most drag queens or drag performers probably pref- prefer it that way. Okay, but you're not you're not getting too caught up in the whole no. they, them, he, him, she, her. No, and I think that's because when I first started doing drag, um, everyone just called everyone she. So even my even my drag friends, when we weren't in drag, we would say she. And it wasn't like we were calling each other, like, the female pronouns because they were female. We were just saying, oh, like, like she went, she went to go get lunch. Yeah. And that was just kind of what we said. It's kind of... Um, like when people call when people call someone who's gay like Mary or something like that. Oh. I feel like it's very much that vibe where we're just like, oh, she's doing this, she's doing that. Even though it's a guy, it's very confusing for um like when my parents they were like, I thought they were like, I thought Stephen was a guy. And I'm like, Stephen is a guy, but she's she's going to get lunch. Oh. <laughs> and it's just that's just like how it was. But yeah, pronouns for me, I wouldn't get offended if anyone called me either pronoun. Got while it. I'm in or out of drag. Okay. So walk me through. You're in Canton, Ohio. And what was your life like growing up? What are your parents like? Did you know you were gay from like the time you can remember? Like just talk through what it was like being you as a little a little kid. Yeah. Um, I feel like it was it was pretty normal. I mean, I, I have a sister, my mom and dad. My mom and dad are still together. And growing up, it, it was like semi-conservative i think the area i grew up was conservative um i wasn't out until i uh, came out in college but throughout my life i mean i knew i was gay like i knew i was different and i feel like it's so strange but like i knew in elementary school but i knew it wasn't something that i i should i should be i felt like everyone was like gay was wrong right like i feel like for, for a lot of people growing up gay is just it's not the norm and it's something that you didn't want to be or it just it was like a bad thing. So, you know, growing up, I didn't really know anyone who was gay. I, I had a lesbian aunt, but that was it. That was I, know, I feel like yeah, everyone has like one lesbian aunt. Right. <laughs> and I didn't come out and I just did. I just did everything normally. I mean, I sounded the exact same way I sound now. And I feel like people are probably like. He's gay. <laughs> well, so He's... let me back, so let me back up. So, and, and first of all, on a, on a serious note, I do want to talk about what a weight that had to be for you to carry around as a young child. I just can't imagine. You know, that's a bad feeling to be like, oh, yeah. okay, wait, I feel this authentic thing inside of me, but it's wrong. So I got to color in the lines here and make sure no one sees it. Like, how big of a burden for a young boy? Ooh, it was. I mean, it was a lot. It's something that. I feel like I haven't really told a lot of people about, but I mean, I was suicidal a lot throughout like high school because I mean, I was bullied for, for how I sounded, how I walked. Like I felt like I was like walking on eggshells because people were like, Oh, you, you walk a, a, like you walk like a girl, you talk like a girl. And I was like, this is just how I, this is just how I walk. So like, I'm like thinking about how I walk. I was in broadcast journalism and I didn't do the announcements in the morning, even though I wanted to, I worked in the back room for like, all of the the switchboard things, right? Mm-hmm. Because I didn't want to be on the TV because I didn't want to get bullied. 
So like there were things I didn't do because I was afraid. Now I was in I was in theater, choir, um, competitive speech, but those people never made me feel bad about like what I was doing. It was other people like outside of those those groups. So I felt like I hit it. But I felt like a lot of people already knew. Yeah, like it was this understood kind of thing nobody really talked about maybe. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I never said it. I never said I had attraction to guys. So everyone, it's the assumed you're straight until someone tells you otherwise. So people just assumed I was straight. And I had a girlfriend in high school, but that was not for real. Like I knew it wasn't for real. I knew. I said this because she was one of my like very good friends, right? My friends are like, oh, you should date her. You guys are good friends. And I'm like, I don't want to. And then they were like, you should do it. So I did it for over a year. Um, And yeah, it was just like that hidden thing. So your parents, what are your parents' names? Kathy and Carl. Kathy and Carl. Shout out to Kathy and Carl and Canton. So did they ever, like, what was their angle with this? Because your parents, they know something, right? Do you feel like they always knew? Did they ever try to ask you about it or probe you? You know, they never probed for anything, any of that information. I think they, I think for a while they probably did think I was straight. But I think that was because I would do things to make them think I was straight. Because you you take these countermeasures, right? Like I took one of my dad's Playboy magazines and hid it in my room. I wasn't using it. It was just there. But... Um, like neither of them really probed and asked too much about it. So you were doing like that as a decoy. Oh yeah. Really? Yeah. How, like how wild is that? Well, when you, you know, it's really, it's again, going back to that carrying this baggage of just, you just are who you are and like not being able to feel that and like putting like, oh, here, look over here. There's a playboy. Yeah. Like what other decoy type things did you do? Okay. You got a girlfriend. Yeah. Like what other type of things like that did you do to sort of like get people off your trail? I feel like with my friends, we would just talk about girls that we liked. You'd be like, oh yeah, she's, she's real hot. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so they were like small things like that. Um, I mean, I, I feel like it was even like music that I was listening to, like some music, like my dad. Oh, this is so funny. <laughs> some I always I always kind of joke around with people that my dad is the he made me the gay I am today with my music choices in movies because he always had me. We were watching movie musicals, which I love still to this day. He took me to see Shania Twain in concert in second grade. We listened to the whole Barbra Streisand duets album. Still love it. Um, we listened to the share the whole share CD on the way to Shania Twain. I was like, I was meant to be gay. Like, yeah. this is perfect. And if, if my dad listened to this, I, it's like he didn't make me gay. Right. But he definitely helped with my choice, like my music and movie choices. Yeah. Um, But it was like, I couldn't fully like latch on to the things that I really liked because those were for girls. Like, even though I loved Britney Spears, I couldn't be like a super fan girl of her because that was that was a girls group, right? Mm-hmm. That was a, that was a girl Spice Girls girls group, like all these things that I really enjoyed. I just kind of I, I kind of had to hide my. I can picture my you because you are a. I mean, I'm I am so into you. Like, I mean, your energy is wow. I mean, you are a, you're fucking cool. Oh, you're thank awesome. You. you really are. Like, it's like your light is like something very spectacular. Yeah. Um, but I can just imagine you in child form or even being younger and like trying to temper oh my your gosh. excitement. Like, okay, shit. Don't like, you know, God. Yeah. Crazy. So then you fe- like, so you go to college and as many people do, they do find themselves, I feel in, yeah. more liberated in college. So in college, you're like, okay, out of the closet. Here I am. Yeah, uh, I came out, so I came out to my friends first, and I was really nervous, like on Facebook Messenger, like I messaged them all, because, you know, with your family, they're always your family, biologically, whatever, but your friends, they could just choose not to be your friends anymore, right? So I was like coming out, and I'm like, how are they going to react? This is like, this is a lot. So came out to them, everything was was pretty much fine, and then my uh, my friend that I met at Ohio State, she was like, you need to come out to your parents now. And I wouldn't say to do that to your friends. Like, if they're not ready to come out, don't do it. But my friend was like, you need to do it. You need to do it this weekend because I was going home to visit them. And it was two weeks before Thanksgiving. And we, my mom and I, we were watching The Kids Are All Right. It's, and it's about like a lesbian yeah. couple. I think they had like a surrogate yeah. or whatever. And after the movie, it was over and it's just quiet. 
and I think I just paused it and looked at my mom and I said, hey, mom, I'm gay. And nothing was said. And I said, I'm going to go to bed. We can talk about this tomorrow. And I messaged my friend. I went in my room, messaged my friend. And that was it for that night. And the next morning, I talked to my mom about it because, I mean, that's a lot. And I do think in general, when people are coming out and you're telling your parents or your friends, I would say try not to talk about it too much in that moment because people need to process that. And if not, they're going to say things that they haven't thought about. Like yeah. they, they need to think things through. So I chatted with my mom the, the next morning and everything was fine. She she said she she loved me no matter what. Um, she was nervous about how people would treat me. She was really afraid of that. She was afraid I, I couldn't give her grandchildren, which obviously like mm -hmm. gay people can give yeah. children grandchildren. Um, was she surprised? Um, you know, I don't think so like n like I never once would be like oh my mom was surprised mm -hmm. like that wasn't a thought that came to me I think she might have been I don't know I don't know how I would describe it I think she was just accepting of it she just was yeah. like she was just like there it yeah. was just like happening yeah and I told her I said okay well Thanksgiving's in two weeks I want everyone to know by Thanksgiving so you you were laying it down yeah, because in my mind, I'm like, I don't want it to be this thing where, like, who knows, who, like, who doesn't. Um, I don't want it to be a secret. And I was I was over it being a secret. So everyone knew, and everything was fine. I do know, like, my dad, he probably wouldn't ever remember this conversation, but we were talking about it because I was like, you know, he needs to talk about this. He needs to. And he said it was like God was punishing him. Mm. And I don't think he would ever remember saying that. But I remember, and I will tell you, I think a lot of people when they come out, they will remember everything people say to them. Like they will remember those moments because it's very, it's very big. So I remember him saying that to me and he was like about ready to, to cry. He said that his dad cried um, when he found out. Um, but now my, my dad is such a big supporter of me and my mom is like, I could not be luckier. They are truly wonderful parents. And my dad, I've even put him in drag before. Oh, stop it. I know. Like, that's amazing. I am truly so lucky. And I I love my parents unconditionally. They are wonderful and they would do anything for me and I would do anything for them. In fairness to your parents or any parents out there, you know, this is a huge moment, right? Because I think we all have ideas in our mind of, you know, when your parents got married, they're going to have this boy and this girl and then the boy is going to marry a girl and they're going to be the white picket fence and the girl's yeah. going to marry a boy. And so it's sort of a grieving of like your own idea of reality. Right. And it just yeah. takes a minute for you to go, Oh, wait a minute. No, like my boy's here. He's healthy. He's happy. This is the way it's meant to be. Yeah. It's, I mean, it's a lot because in, um, whenever, like I don't watch many shows, but there was on Grey's Anatomy one time, it, it um, uh, it was someone coming out to, her dad and, and this character had been straight her entire life to her to her family, right? So when she came out, her then girlfriend was like, you know, this is something he needs to process too because your entire life you have been straight. And now you're telling him that that's not true. So it's something that they need to come to terms with. Now, I, I will say that if there are parents who happen to have someone come out to them or a friend, family, anyone, it's a it's a really big thing just to say, like, I'm gay to someone and you've never told them before you've, or if you've never told anyone. So if you need time to process, like, tell them, let me process this and then we can talk about it. Because, like I said, my dad probably will, does not remember ever saying that to me, but I will always remember it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, the two things you can't take back, time spent and words spoken. There you go. So you're, it's very sage advice for such a young buck like you. to It really is to say... You know, if you're in a big conversation like that, don't be afraid to be like, okay, you know, we're good here. I just, I really just, I need time for, I need time to sort of let this settle in Yeah. before you start just, you know, asking dumb questions and then saying things that you'll ultimately want to take back. Oh yeah, absolutely. You have to get, you have to get your, you know, your thoughts to words and that's, that's a lot. Cause you're going to, 
just like word vomit, whatever's in your mind. Yeah. And just take time to figure that out. There's, there's no rush. So the drag thing. Yeah. Did you, so were you, when you were really little, did you like to dress in girl clothes or did this come later? When did the drag thing really start to, to happen for you? So I never really dressed up as a girl for anything. I was, uh, maybe once for Halloween, I was a, a girl. But other than that, I never really had the urge to do it, even when I was in college. And that, but that's when I first did it. So my my best friend in college, she was like, "You should uh, try doing drag." And I said, "I will never do drag. I will never do it." I told her, matter of fact, I will never do drag. And then my uh, my junior year, my friend was helping do the amateur drag show at Ohio State. And she said, you should try this out. So I was going to, but then I chickened out. You know, I had never put makeup on. I had never, you know, walked in heels, never had a dress. Like, I don't know anything about it. My senior year, I was dating someone and he had a connection to all these other drag queens. Well, after I got introduced to that, then I was like, okay, I'll do it this year. So my drag sister painted me. Um, another drag sister helped me pick out a wig and my, uh, my dress. And... I just went into this amateur drag show. And that's when my my drag grandmother now, she was hosting it. That's how like I really got introduced to her. And then they started booking me. And that's really how I got started in drag. And you just loved it. Yeah. I just, I love performing. Like I said, I was in theater in high school. Yeah. So for me, I always wanted to do some sort of like community theater or something performing. Um, and that was my community theater is just putting on, you know, this costume and makeup and performing for people and making them happy. I, I mean, you do shine like a diamond. I mean, I truly, when I saw you, I was like, and you're a good looking lady too. <laughs> Thank you. You know what I mean? I'm like, wow. And like, you just had it going on and you just, it just felt like you were so fluid in it. And like, you were just meant to be in this. Well, space. thank you. I really appreciate that. Do you sort of just, when you put it on, like, do you just kind of switch? Like, you're just like, it's on right now. Like, I am, does it give you, like, life? I think, I don't think the actual, like, makeup or costume really give me a life. I think it's making people happy. Yeah. And making people laugh. So my, my drag name is Plenty of Smiles. Mm -hmm. And I just, I want to make people smile. I want people, like, have a good time. And I, I love that feeling. Um... And I think that's just, that's like why I do it in the first place. So then you, you decide the, like the, where does the cookie, like the, so you not only make the cookies, but you also come to people's houses and kind of do the cookie decorating, which I think is such a great idea. Yeah. Where did that come from? I've been drag for like 10 years and I've been doing cookies for nine. And I started, you know, decorating cookies because I didn't want to work for anyone else. I was like, I'm sick of working for other people, asking for time off. Let's try this. So I, you know, I already knew how to bake cookies, but I didn't know how to decorate them. So I started doing that. And someone said, well, what, like, what have you taught classes? And I was like, oh, that'd be great. Like, that sounds wonderful. I'll teach classes. And they said, well, what if you did it when you were in drag? And at first I said no, because I wasn't sure, you know, if people would even want that. Um, oh, of course they want that. And yeah, I found out very quickly people do want that. Yes. And... That's that's really just how it started. And my I I had a friend and she said, because I had talked about doing these cookie classes and drag, and I didn't really I didn't know what I was doing at all. And she said, Okay, well, I'm booking you for this date to do a cookie decorating workshop. And I'm like, but I don't have she said, No, I know you don't have everything ready. But if I book you right now, you'll get it ready for that date. Because if I don't push you to do it, it'll always be a, it'll always just be this idea. You'll, you'll never do it. You'll always have all these excuses, whatever. I'm going to book you for this date. You'll be ready for this date. And that's how you'll start figuring it out. And I did. And off you went. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I am truly surrounded by wonderful, amazing, like inspirational people who push me to do better. They make me want to be better. And because of so many people, that's like why I am where I am today. Weren't you in a contest on TV? Yeah, I did. Uh... Food Network Christmas Cookie Challenge. Y yes. So how did that pan out for you? I mean, it that was, had to get like that had to have given you some real visibility and some great traction. Oh yeah, it was great. Um, so in general, in the cookie community, there it's mainly women, mainly women who do cookie decorating, right? Mm -hmm. There's a handful of guys, most of us gay. I think almost all of them. I can't name a straight one, I guess. And I had visibility there, but then when I did the Food Network show. 
And then I would go to – there's conferences every year called Cookie Con, and I would go to those, <laughs> and that that also got my name out. Um, but what was so wonderful about the show, being on the Food Network, is that people started messaging me because – for me, it's really important to have like this representation out there, right? So whenever I'd go to Cookie Con, I would get in drag to, for people who have probably never seen a drag queen. But when I was on the show and they mentioned me being a drag queen and then me being gay, any of that, people would message me and they're like, hey, my my child or someone I know is coming out or they have questions about it. And they just appreciated that there was someone there who was maybe a little different or someone that could give them any information or resources that they could use in their own life. So I love being on the show. It was a great experience, but it was super fulfilling because I could help other people who might not have ever known about drag or how to talk to someone who was coming out or someone who's transitioning. Um, I've, I think that's like the best part of it. I want to go back to something you said a little bit earlier about being suicidal. Okay. And I, and I, I know that for people who are in the closet or maybe trans or f- don't feel like they're in the right gender, um, suppressing that and not being supported, uh, whether it's from your community, your family and friends. I mean, the suicide rate is, is that, I mean, it's, you know, it doesn't lie. Yeah. So going back to that boy who felt those feelings and felt like, you know, my life isn't worthy. I am having suicidal thoughts. How can people... But like better support something that's so foreign to them. I, I think education is is the best way to combat mo- most things in the world, right? Yeah. Because if you're ignorant to to any, I guess anything new, you're gonna have a, a an opinion that doesn't. It doesn't really. I mean, I guess it matters, but it's an uneducated opinion. And how can you make a judgment based off something you don't know? Um, so I always tell people to educate themselves a little first and I try to put that out there too. Um, I don't know. I, education is, is the main thing. And then just being open to, to listening. Yeah. Because like, you know, I, I look at you and I think to myself, like how great this is going to be people seeing someone like you so comfortable in their own skin and, and feeling like, you know, I look at you and I think, God, you are on your track. You're on your life's purpose. Like this all feels so authentic and meant to be, but you didn't always feel that way. Oh no. You know, and it's just, it, it pains me to think of the number of people who are out there living, you know, in a life where they feel like they can't really be who they are. And I think Something that's really great that's happening is you see, you know, LGBTQ plus people in in the media. You see them movies, music. You see them in all these places. And representation matters so much. I was at a flea market once with my with my my now ex, and this younger uh, this younger person walked up to me and my ex, and we were getting food. I think I was getting a corn dog because I do love a corn dog. Who doesn't love a good corn dog? I know, right? (laughs) And they were like are you a couple? And I'm, and I was like, yeah. And they said, you know, my family, they, they don't like who I am. And they, they basically don't want to be part of my life. And just by me and my, my ex being there, that gave them someone to be like, there's a couple here. There, there is someone out there and there are people out there. And I told them that I told them this, I was like, you know, no matter what, even if your family doesn't accept you, there's something called a chosen family in the mm-hmm. in the gay community. I'm like, there are people who care about you. There are people who would take you in. There are people who who love you even though they don't know you. Like there's there's always someone out there. And I think that's um it's really hard to see when you're you know in your closed family or a closed community. It's hard to know that because you don't see it. But it's like there are people out there. And you know, just by me and my ex being there just standing around at the flea market. We didn't talk to this person beforehand. He saw us and then came up and said something. And I I hope that person is okay. And Mm -hmm. I hope that person found out that people love them no matter what. And that's just, that's why representation matters. I was just standing there. Yeah, you were just standing there. And that gave them something. And Mm -hmm. I don't care, I don't care what that something was. I'm I'm glad they said something. And I'm I'm hoping that that took them on a journey to find out 
where where like life will lead them. Do you get? Do you feel like? Um, for the most part, people are kind and people sort of do leave you alone. Do you get any outward sort of negativity from I, people? I don't really get any outward negativity. Um, there have been times where I've been I've been nervous that, I, you know, there could be something that could happen, especially with all the drag legislation that has been happening, you know, drag is a big part of my business. Yeah. And whenever I do my workshops... Um, I, sometimes I do them at universities around the country. And for me, I was nervous because, you know, what if I get to a university and they've been advertising it and there's another group that doesn't want me to be there? I don't I don't have security. And I, I don't know if the school would provide it, but it's like, it's just me and I'm traveling. It's not like I have people with me. It's just me. So sometimes, sometimes I do get nervous for those situations. Um, but I think... In general, people are good. Mm -hmm. I think people are kind, and I think they want to help. And um, I don't know either. Either way, I would never be too afraid to to be myself and still put myself in that position, even if there was opposition. Because you know, even if someone came up to me and they were opposed to to who I am or what I was doing, I would rather have a conversation with them than just completely block it out because that's not helping anything either. And I know some people probably would be like, I'd rather just get out of that situation and not be part of it. But I don't know. I think, I think that's what progress can look like. Yeah. Is, you know, facing those people who oppose you and making them realize that I'm just a person. I just happen to be in a dress and makeup and a wig. Yeah. I'm still, I'm still a guy. I'm still just, a hairy man who shaved and got into a wig and stuff, right? Um, but no, I think people are generally good. And I, and I choose to believe that because I think if you really let that stuff get you down, you'll be in that negative headspace. And I'm all about sending out positive energy and receiving positive energy. Um, so that's what I choose to believe is like there's this positivity out there and there's this good energy and I'm going to accept that. Yeah, and that's, I mean, really, it, it, that's half the battle. It is. What's going on between your two ears is half the battle. Actually, 100%. I would, I would say, I would argue probably more than half the battle in life. So if you're seeing it, you know, the glass half full, yeah. which I like to do that too, right? Yeah. Good things will come to you. I 100% agree with that. Now, and I, I try to tell people that. I'm like, think good, good will come. Yeah. Now, are you dating anyone? I am not. Are you single? Yeah. You're out in the streets. I know. Uh oh, better not put that out there. <laughs> Don't worry. You might Believe have me, some mama's suitors. Been mama's been fishing for for some time, and how is it throwing them back? What is it like? What is the 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 dating community in Columbus like for a gay man? Like, give me the good, bad, and the ugly. Rough waters. I'm rough. Telling wa you. Is it rough waters? Um, not always. So I I, I uh, listened to this audio book, and they said, you know. If you constantly say that men are trash, then you're probably going to attract trash. And not all men are trash. We know that. We know that for a fact. Like, not all people that you're trying to date are are trash, right? Um, I think with my dating experience, I have not let that, um, I guess, uh, I'm trying to think of the word. I haven't deter let... Deter you? Yeah, I haven't let it deter jade me. You? Jade me. Um, I think I'm I'm more cautious. And I also don't. Am I allowed to say bad words? Oh, please do. Okay, like I don't put up with anyone with anyone's shit. And yeah. if and if they do not like meld with me, I I let it go. I'm like, this is not for me. We're we're not a match, and I'm okay with saying that. Um, but yeah, I just I don't put up with it. If I know it's not a match, I don't do it. Are you on apps? Uh, yeah, a couple, just a couple. Yeah. Should we get on there and look at a couple? Oh my gosh. Well, it depends what app you want to look I at. I want to look. I want to see. Now, are you on, is it a specific, like, so is there a specific gay app or can you do like a drop down Tinder gay app? Like, so there, there is a, like on Tinder, you can just put, put like, like, like okay. male interested in Let men. me see. Let me see. Oh my I want, goodness. Okay. I want to swipe. Now, I, who, what are you into though? Like what kind of, uh, like what are your specs in terms of? somebody you would like like do you like tall bigger like blonde do you have any sort of requirements you know i always tell my friends i'm like i'm just into men 
Like so it just depends I, on the vibe. I am very into a personality. Like there are there are men that I wasn't super attracted to like physically, but as soon as I got to know their personality, I was very into them. Yeah. Um Yeah, I Let think, me see some I think it, okay, here. so so have you ever used see. Tinder? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I mean, not personally, but I've I've used other people's. Okay. So r- just remind me real quick. So I believe if you swipe right, that's that means you like them. Okay. If so you left, swipe left, this guy we totally don't like. He's twenty two and he's too. That's so young. He's too cheesy on the thing. So I'm gonna go left on him. Okay? okay. And I think if you. Okay. So question. Yeah. Do somebody told me one time. That there are different kind of names, like there's a bear. Oh yeah. So is that still is that a thing? <laughs> yeah, there's there's explain, a lot. So explain that. Like so, like a bair is like. I'm gonna go from like hairless to hairy, okay? Because okay? I feel like that's that's the general progression. Okay. So I feel like there's there's twinks, which are hairless. I think, in my opinion, they're younger. Okay. And then after that, I think a step up would be maybe a, I would say a twunk. Because it's like a muscular but still hairless ish okay. person. Then I would say it goes to otter, which I would consider myself more of an otter. Like I'm a hairy man, so like I've got like chest hair. Yeah, hairier man, but like slim. Who and thought of the word otter though? Because they don't have hair, do they? Otters, yeah. They have hair. Yeah. Oh, I must be thinking of a sea lion or something. You so probably you're are an otter. I, yeah. Okay. I would say I'm I'm categorized as an otter. I'm still waiting to see what this guy. I'm trying to figure out what this guy is. I think he's a bear. And then I think the next one up might be a wolf, and I think that's more of a muscular, hairy person. Okay. And then it goes into bears. This guy is a bear. Let me see. D- well, okay. So if would you, you be into him? <gasps> mm, I think I know who that is, and I have to know. For okay. Me. Sometimes all of my friends swipe. For Twitter, a uh, tender on me, and I think that's so much fun. I might get you a match. So, this guy looks kind of sexy, like okay, okay. Oh, he has an Eminem vibe. I just talked to my friend about Eminem in <sighs> Eight Mile, and he could get it, uh-huh. he could get it in Eight Mile. I don't know how he looks now. No, he's really so. He just came out, I just saw him. He has like his hair's red, kind of a red beard. He has a different vibe going on, and like musically. It's kind of evolved a little bit too. I think he's trying to bring something out. I'm gonna go left on this guy. Oh, so you say <gasps> oh, no? Wait, no. How do I reverse that? You can't <gasps> unless we pay for it. I know. I know. See, like I would accidentally swipe left on people, and oh, I'm like, oh I my meant- god, what if I just my future husband gone from? I just completely. No, it's okay because sometimes <gasps> they'll recycle them and they'll I bring it back. I just went left on Eminem. It's okay. What the fuck am I thinking? Okay, it's, this guy is not. I this is like this is the best way to date. Okay. <laughs> but the cat, like when you put things in front of your face, like, okay, let's tap. I on. you know what something I really hate is when people they'll have their photos and they're only half of their face. Well, that's the thing. It's like what's the Show mystery? Show your face. I'm gonna see it one day if right. we match. What about this? Do you like the hugging of the dog? Because that's okay. that's kind. It is kind. I do. I am a big animal lover. Yes, I am too. So he's cute. But why is there sunglasses on his face? Well, let's, okay, let's go. See, that's my thing. Yeah. I need to see. Wait, do you want to see my profile? Yes. And tell, give me, give me I your do. opinion on my I, profile. I want, I want to see your profile. I hope you have yourself in drag on there. You know, I don't. Whoa. So now there, there's another app that I'm on, but Whoa. I will. I'm not going to let you do that one because that one. Why? People be sending all kinds of photos immediately. That's what I want to see. You're going to see a wiener. Can I see a wiener? Oh my. Why would we not go there? Why would we go for the oh baby app if we could have the big ball? Have you ever app? heard of Grinder? Yeah. It's Grinder. Can we do it? Oh my God. Please. You can see the gay people. You the, are so handsome. Thank you. You can see the men who are in our vicinity. Okay. Let's look. Like, let's do Grinder. It'll tell you how many feet you are away from We're them. here. We're doing it. Okay. We're doing it. Oh my it. gosh. Did you see how the Grindr. winner takes it all? Oh, it's so good. Okay. So when you ask me for my favorite music, yeah. the winner takes it all is probably my favorite ABBA it song. Um, it was my big breakup song. My like last breakup song. And I love it so much. And the lyrics are so wonderful. I love ABBA. I love ABBA. I love the Spice Girl. And I put Grinder on the last page of my phone because I'm not, I try not to get on there very much because it's too much. It really. I want to see. I love too much. I'm all about too much. You're all I about hope I it. get a dick pic. See, like if this, I don't, I'll be disappointed. See, like this person. <gasps> oh, bring it on. I know, right? I'm, okay, so for this one, this one, if you want to see their photos, you swipe up. Okay. And then it'll sh- see. Look, but yeah, but already. And then how? That's do, just their profile. How do I um 
if I swipe, is it left and right the same no, thing? No, this one, this one you don't swipe. This one you can just message. So how can I get them to send me like a naked pic? Oh my gosh. Well, we don't want to just ask them. Well, that's true. Let me see. I got to play it cool. Because well, what, what if it's someone that like we actually do want to meet up with later? And then we're like, show me your wiener. And no, then they're I just like, say, whoa, whoa, whoa. I won't do that. Let me see. I promise you I won't write anything until unless you give me permission. Ooh, see this one. Well, look, this one, this is his first photo. And then I'll let you swipe down. But look see, at that. Oh, my. Holy that, that, shit. That's their profile photo. Is that photo. a sock? No. So, so any of my friends that are going to be listening to this are going to be like, don't give her <gasps> your phone. I know this person. Don't give her your phone. I think that stuff is funny. It's so good. Wow. That has to be a sock in there. No. Oh, my gosh. You would be surprised at some of the... Well, this guy's wearing a full-on mask. That's probably a red flag. This but guy's some people cute. are into that. He's, I feel like you're marriage material, though. Like I you feel know, like you're like a long-term... Like I, somebody get a hold of you and just never want to let you go. They do be letting me go, though. Why, though? Are you too much for them? Like, what's your... um? No, they cheat on me. Are you serious? Yes. So is that a thing? Like, so is it... Would you say... Yes. That in the gay community, males specifically, because you can speak to the, man, the men, is there a... is Does cheating run rampant? Like, is that like a thing where you're like, it's very, very hard to find someone? You know, I think cheating is in all like straight gay yes. lesbian I, I think it's in all relationships and i think it's something that's really common because everything is so accessible um from my personal experience i think a lot of times there's always this thought there could be something better out there yeah so people they're like oh i really like what you're what you're giving but i could get something else and they they tried something else. So that you just find, like, you just find out or they tell you or, like, you... Uh, I have found out and they have also told me. Here's one. He's cute. Here's a question. Why is this guy in the photo with him as he say? <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. You know, it's so funny. That's my best friend. <laughs> uh, Stop it. They're in a, they're a, they're a relationship. Okay, so, so couples will get on here. Okay, so they, wanna, and they, they want to. They third. They want to. Th okay, they want to thruple here, but this for a good time. They don't want like a relationship. They no, they are like, already in a relationship. Oh my gosh! But that you know is what's hilarious. funny? People think that we're in a thruple sometimes. But yeah, the dating stuff is wild to me. Thank you for letting me. I'm so glad you enjoyed it. Did you see my profile? Yeah, you're not on that one. Here, I'll show you. But you just look. You're like way hotter than anybody. Oh my, thank you. you. Are. I, okay, I'm gonna show you my photos really quick. Look, see, I was see, I'm being a little slut oh, on yeah. here too. Oh yeah. And then I'm roller skating. No, it's so good. That's actually such a cute picture of you. And then I'm in my suit. So good. So like I'm giving them, I'm giving them business. I'm giving them fun. And then I'm giving them, this is what you could see yeah. if things go well. So you, what's your longest relationship? A little over five years. Wow. Yeah. Did you think he was the one? You know, at the time I did, well, you know, how sometimes you'll get into, I'm not sure if you've ever had this, but it's like you get into a place where you're comfortable and you're like, well, what if I can't find something else? Yeah. What if, what if this is the best I can do? So I'm glad I got out of that because I can definitely do better. <laughs> hey, and, and say that again. <laughs> yeah. Um, but, you know, each time I have been the person who got my heart broken and I'm just not putting myself out there to get my heart broken anymore. I'm not breaking people's hearts. Like, I mean, I'll just be honest if I don't think it's a thing. But I just think that, I don't know, people, they just... Have always they've always been not super nice to me in relationships. But don't you think you kind of are putting yourself out there no matter what? It's like there's always you that are. chance though that you're going to get your heart broken. 100%. We got to find you a really good solid man. I want to if anybody's out there that can measure up to this guy hmm. because we're talking Alex is a for those of you you can see him on YouTube if you're watching YouTube but if you're on Spotify he is. A very very handsome guy, but you're also like your eyes just are like you just reek of joy and. Thank you. I mean, I'm sure you're not happy all the time, but like you just have <laughs> such a great fucking vibe and your smile. Thanks. And I think we need to find you like the guy. Is this like my episode of like the Bachelor? I think it. Would you do that? Would you do that? Do you know that that's something I've always wanted to do? Did you know I applied for a show that was like that where I could have been a contestant for like a a, a Bachelor kind of person do you think we could do this like if i can get like four suitors that i think are suitable to come in here and like plead oh my their God. case is it almost like the newlywed game or not the, oh, what's that one where they would all be sitting like on a stool and i can't see them but they answer questions yes. that i ask i can put no but i can put like a thing in between i've got a third microphone oh they can come in and you guys can talk without like seeing each other 
Are these all people from Columbus? They don't have to be, but it would be, you know, they'd have mm. to travel here. We could do Cleveland, Cincinnati. We could like take it. They, I would say within Ohio. You'd be worth the drive. Oh my gosh. Thank so you. So if anybody's out there, I think, I think Alex is up for this. So DM me. I, I need, I would, I'd be up for, for meeting anyone. Here's what I think. I think we, we just pick three people. Okay. Cause it's quality over quantity. Yeah. I would agree. So if you're out there and you feel like you might be up to par we can make something happen. I'm being dead serious. I think it can be amazing. I that was that sounds like a good time for me. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah. So you're in. I am. You're in. I'm you're in. hooked. I'm pulling, I am. I'm you are. You in. I love it. It's super fun. It's been so fun. So, do you want kids? Or, you know, here's the thing. I I don't. But if I were with someone who did, I would be open to that. I know. But so, I don't want kids right now. Yeah. Because I. I love traveling. I love doing all these things. I love my independence. And I feel like with children, you you don't really have, you have it to an extent. But it's like, if I don't go on vacation, I have to either find someone to watch the kids yep. or they just come with us and then I can't do the things that I might want to. Mm-hmm. Because like if the kids don't want to do it, then, they, then we don't do it. So I'd be open to it, but not right this moment. And you know, sometimes it's part of that is meeting the right person. And then mm-hmm. all of a sudden you're like, now I can envision a life that I never thought that I could. Yeah. And that's that's really sometimes part of it. And you're only 32. Yeah. And also like if I were dating someone and like for their life, they really wanted children. Yeah. Like who am I to say, well, I don't. So we're not. You late. sound open to potential. To potential. I am. Listen out there. He's open. He's, <laughs> he's open wide for kids in the future, but he wants to travel with you first to exotic islands. Yeah. And, and he wants to get to know you and like do all kinds of fun shit together first. Yeah. Does that sound fun out there? Yeah. yeah. Out there. Yeah. You, that man right there that's listening. Yeah. We're talking to you. Exactly. Yeah. You guy. Okay. So are you a Swifty? I'm so I'm not a Swifty. I do enjoy some of her music. Mm-hmm. I've met her once. You met Taylor Swift? Yeah. Wait, um, so tell me about this. So when I was dating the girl in high school. Stop it. Swear, swear. So uh, she played at Blossom Music Center. I'm not sure if you're familiar yeah. with that. But this was her first CD. This was like teardrops on my guitar, our song kind of music, right? And they had an extra ticket. So I went with them. We sat in, in the lawn seats. And after the show, and Brad Paisley was there, and Allison Krauss came out, and they did Whiskey Lullaby, and I was living my life. Oh like my I was God. so in love with this. And Taylor Swift came out on the lawn with her mom, so I got to meet her mom, too, and just took pictures with people. Uh, so I got to hug Taylor Swift. Um, I got... So here's the sad part. I don't know where the photo is. I lost it, because I never... How was I supposed to know she was going to be this amazing big star? This was like her first CD. I said, I'll go see this concert. Would you give anything for that photo? Oh, my gosh. Just to be able to like yeah. but put so, it on social media and be like, I knew her when. I know. Could you imagine? No. Little Chunky Alex with Taylor Swift. Were you Chunky? Oh, yeah, I was Chunky. Stop. Mm-hmm. And you just grew, did you just grow out of it because of your height? No, I, I, I was eating like a lot. I was eating like a lot of food. Like portion control was not my, was not my thing. And I was just like, you know what? I want to change this. And I lessened my portions and. Like how, like how old were you? And when you started to get. I was in high school, I started like losing weight. So how much more weight did you have on you? Uh, I think I was over 200 pounds at one point. And you're what now? Like a buck 50? Uh, what, like I think I'm like 160, 165. Wow. You just turned it all around. Yeah. I just said. I just said, hey, you should probably change this. And I did. And do you do ex- do you work out? I do. I try to every day. They're not like long exercises by any means, but I try to stay active. Um, try to work out a little bit. What about the cookies? You, do you keep yourself at a, or do you just get sick of the cookies after a while? I don't really want cookies very often, but I do love sweets. Mm-hmm. Your little mini cake, by the way, the little mini confetti cake. Yeah. I mean, with a little fork Thank you. and a little mini foil thing. I mean, the presentation, like, you know, give them the fork with it. Like, why waste any time? Let's just dig right in. So I do love ABBA, too. So this is, this is in our, it gets into our heartstrings. I went to London uh, last year to see the Hologram concert, and it was life-changing. It was amazing. I cried. <sighs> Tell me about it. Like were so you I, went, just... I went with my friend okay, because I was like, I, I want to go with someone. And the holograms, it was like their 70s bodies. And they just like rose from the stage. And I 
I was I was in the front, like against the thing. I got there early. I said, I'm not messing around. This might be my one chance to see it. And it was it was phenomenal. I would fly back there to see it again. That's how good it was. This song is really good. I haven't heard this in a long time. Uh, and then I was on TikTok and someone made a video and she has the perspective of the other person in this song. And oh my gosh, I was at home and I was just like, I love to cry. I love to cry in the shower, like listening to sad songs. Mm -hmm. This is one of them. That version. I just have like a list of like crying songs. Isn't that good for you though? Oh my God, I love it. Let's cry together. Oh my gosh. Should we? Let's see if we can make ourselves cry. We want to cry right now? Maybe. I'll just see if we could. We're probably too hyped up about your probably, future husband. Probably. Because this the loser a, takes the fall, right? This yeah, is sad. Yeah. Oh, this is no. what the, my most recent the ex The most did. recent. Really? Anyone that hurts Alex, I don't like you. You know what? I, I don't really hold a lot of grudges. I feel like it's just, it's not worth it. And I actually have good relationships with all, all the guys who I've been with. And I don't know, you know, it, if it wasn't going to work, I guess I'd rather find out early than see, there's later. that attitude. There's that attitude again. Yeah. There's amazing th attitude. I tried to, I'm, I started this new thing cause I heard it in this audiobook, and it said, when something happens to you that is bad for some reason, say this is good because, and think of a reason why, like whatever happened to you was good. So my ex cheated on me, and this is good because I found out we were not meant to be, and I, it gives me a chance to find someone else. Yeah. You know what? That is so, so spot on. It's like, like why, why stay sad? Why stay upset? No. You go, uh, you go right on to Spice Girls. I also flew to the UK to see the Spice Girls in concert. You are not I don't mess around. You are so tell me about that. Okay. So I've loved the Spice Girls since I was growing up. My sister had all the dolls. She still has them. And if she ever does anything with them besides let me buy them, I'll be upset because I want them. And I've just always loved them. And I told all my friends, I said, you know, if they come back in concert, even if it's just in the UK, I am going there to see them. They announced they were going in concert and I stayed up or I like woke up at like, uh, like four in the morning and I bought my concert ticket without anyone going with me, without a plane ticket. I bought the concert ticket, booked my flight, and then found someone to go with me. And it was so amazing because you're surrounded by, pe by people who also love the Spice Girls. And it was wonderful. So were they really were they really good? They were. Did oh, my gosh, yeah. Like, the production was, was wonderful. Their costuming was great. I cried there, too. You did? Oh, my gosh, because it was just, like... So good. Like, you know, I grew up with them. Then they broke up because Jerry left. And... Then I just like kind of, I've just been a fan. And then seeing them in person, and I was close. I've got very long arms. I've got very long arms, right? And I was in, it's called, I think it's called the Spice Circle or something like that. And I was in that inner circle. And the stage is like an arm's length away from me. And they're just right there, just dancing. And I was on cloud nine. I was so excited. And this is my favorite, I think this is my favorite song because it reminds me of growing up, like in the summer, this song was just there. Yeah. And I love the sound. I love their outfits in it. Yeah. I just love it. The nostalgia. Yes. All right, Alex. So before we wrap up, circling back around yeah. to when you grew up and kind of carrying that load and now not having that load, but knowing that there are other people out there right now mm -hmm. who are just feeling their way around all of this, maybe just coming out like looking around, trying to feel acceptance and get their their footing, right? Yeah. Like what would you say, what would your mm. your advice be to to that person out there? Kind of like what you would say to yourself, your your younger self or to somebody right now who's just starting that journey that you've been on. Hmm. That's a good question. I think it kind of goes back to what we were talking about is like there are people out there for you. And I think that applies to, to everyone because, you know, even if you weren't LGBTQ plus and you were maybe nerdy in school or you're that theater kid or whatever, there are groups of people who are just like you. You just have to find them. You just haven't found them yet. And you will. You will find the people that you fit with and it's and it'll feel it'll feel wonderful. It really will. And I think in, you know, there are people who have big high schools and small high schools and big towns, small towns. 
you only see what's around you. And until you until you branch out, you think there's nothing there for you. There is something there for you. There are people there for you. There's there's a place for you somewhere. And I and and you will find it and you just have to look for it. It is so so true, isn't it? Yes. When you're in high school and you're thinking like your your sphere of influence is kind of like so small yeah. and you really don't you don't know what you don't know. Correct. So you feel like this is it. Like I am different. I'm never going to fit in. This is the world. Oh my god. And what you soon find out when you get out of your, you know, whatever suburb you're in or your the home you grew up in, there is a huge colorful amazing big wide world out there yeah. that's just waiting and you can you make it whatever it you want yes yes yep i also i also tell my friends uh like nothing really matters because everything is made up so if if you want to go out there and you're like hey i don't want to live here anymore i want to go somewhere else and do it what's stopping you just yourself. So yeah. if 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 that's what if that is what you need and that's what you think is going to to help you or help you find those people that are your people, then do it. We only have one life. I could die tomorrow, and I want to make sure that I buy the things I want and I do the things I want. Go confidently in the direction of your dreams. Yes, Alex. damn right. Well, this has been just an absolute pleasure. Thank you so much for coming in. And for all of you potential suitors out there, <laughs> I want you to DM me at the Carrie Croft show. And I'm dead serious about this. We're going to do a bachelor with Alex. I um, love and he's going to give you plenty of smiles. A boom. <laughs> all right, guys. Thank you so much, Alex. Again, thank you. It's been thank a total you. pleasure. Please continue to follow me on YouTube, Spotify, or Apple. And until next time, keep moving. Perfect. That was so great. It was so much fun. That hour flew by. I know. Oh my God. 